Gabriella netting the forehand after Jennifer had run. A bit. Well, Gabby's playing. In this opening game. The forehand now the back end. Love 30. Gabby winning almost a million dollars in prize money last year and has won over three and a half million dollars during her career. Does Jennifer open by breaking Sabatini's service? An auspicious start to an afternoon of tennis, would it not? Well, Jennifer's got off to a very good start so far, but she has to capitalize on these break points now. Sabatini broken for only the fourth time in this tournament. 15 love. It was a very good second serve from Jennifer Capriati right into the backhand corner. One area of criticism of Jennifer's game, and she herself is quick to raise this, is the accuracy of her first serves. But Tom Gullickson was saying it is something that can be readily adjusted. It's not mechanical, apparently. on as he does in all of Jennifer's matches, but a well-disguised backhand from Capriati. Sabatini oh. has yet to earn a point. Two love Capriati. Well, they're both very popular players here, Jennifer being the American player, but a huge Latin following for Gabriella Sabatini. And it is quite remarkable that Jennifer has won the first eight points of this match. Oh, oh there you go. Okay. Love. Sabatini defeated Steffi Graf in 1988 here. Graf the champion in 89, Sabatini again in 90. <laughs> for someone only 20 years of age. good movement from Jennifer and once again she comes up with the winner with the backhand up the line catching her opponent off guard from Jennifer, pulling Sabatini wide, 
and then Jennifer just heading to the open court. And the eight. Right down the middle. Well, the Virginia Slims of Florida is part of the Kraft General Foods World Tour, and we have 60 tournaments in over 20 countries, and we play, the women play, for $23 million in prize money. So I guess you could say we've come a long way, baby. <laughs> and again, the service winner. Sabatini now relying on her very strong service game. Well, that's one part of Sabatini's game that has improved over the last couple of years. Gaddy is very strong. service. What a tremendous return by Capriati to take us to Deuce, the kick on the service by Sabatini. It was a very good serve from Sabatini. The Capriati just getting to it and hitting a very good return down the line. The windy conditions not letting up at all. And Sabatini at the moment serving from the northern end. So her ball toss for her serve right into the sun. Both. It caused both Posier and Graf problems in our first semifinal, one by Steffi. of the pace between Sabatini and Jennifer. Sabatini hits with a lot of heavy topspin. And she catches Capriati right there, but Gabby tried to come in behind that shot, caught in no man's land. She was just a little slow getting in behind the, the ball to the backhand side. Break point. that for a backhand. Well, there's not many players who can hit a backhand like that. Such heavy topspin. And then to come up with the winner, because it wasn't a bad return. Mm. It's so hard to read where Gabby is hitting those backhands. Advantage Sabatini, an opportunity to serve for her first game, trailing to love. Sabatini is concentrating serving to Capriati's forehand on both courts. Three service winners in this game by Gabby. Turn to Deuce for a third time. Jennifer, a classic two-handed 
backhand, but she has very, very good uh, footwork, but the forehand side is the weaker for Jennifer Capriati. into her advantage Sabatini. Well, it was a very short return landing inside the service line and that enabled Gabby to attack the net. This is the fourth time she served for this game. Third time, pardon me. And last year when Gabby won the US Open against uh, Steffi Graf in the final, Mary Jo Fernandez in the semi-final. Gabby was very successful because she attacked the net and that's something that she's worked on in her game. from Infinity, the luxury car division of the early October. saying that the pressure now is on Jennifer Capriati in her second year on tour, that she's no longer the heralded newcomer. She is a proven commodity and now must produce over the long haul. Sabatini coming up on the approach. Well, Sabatini can hit the slice as well as the top spin off her ground strokes, but she's very confident when she comes to the net now. She's worked on that net play with her coach, Carlos Kiermaier. And he started working with her after the French Open last year. They were out hitting earlier today for a prolonged period of time. She and her coach on this court. And just wide. 30-15. A, a lot of people are waiting to see just how well Jennifer does in the second year on the uh, Kraft General Foods World Tour because what happens, a lot of youngsters come out they play, they don't have any pressure the first year and they do well and then all of a sudden all the pressure is on them and they don't perform as well in the second year. crowd must agree this is taking on the form and shape of an outstanding tennis match the prolonged rally 30 all I think Jennifer Capriati will do well in the second year on the tour because she's definitely in a class of her own as far as the juniors go
break points. Sabatini has been broken once today. Here's her opportunity to avenge that first game. And not us at two all. Well, Gabby is trying to play the forehand side of Jennifer Moore. Jennifer's backhand is so consistent, that double-handed backhand. And I'm sure Jimmy Abbott might have had a little bit to do with that shot because Jennifer got lessons from him when she was only four years of age. Now, that wasn't all that long ago. Sabatini with the advantage. Well, and they, they break opportunity. The you? heavy top spin plus the fact that the wind is behind Sabatini. Very difficult for Jennifer Capriati to get any depth on her shots. Sabatini wanting a forehand. Gabby, a right shot right into the backhand side there, but what can you do when your opponent comes up with a winning backhand like that? Sabatini is showing us early that more times than not, she will be successful in coming to the net. Well, the difference with that approach shot then was that it was a slice backhand, not much pace, and Capriati had to create her own pace, whereas the time when she hit that screaming backhand win across court, it was a hard-struck ball by Sabatini, and Capriati just took the pace off that. Sabatini taking her time, because Capriati does play very quickly. The third time in this game that Sabatini has had this break opportunity. Duth a third time. see the debris it is not intentionally thrown it is being carried onto the court from distant areas of the polo club three separate break points to hold service. Jennifer is a very, very strong competitor. And it's amazing for somebody so young to be that mentally tough. And she went for it, did she not? Backhand by Capriati. Deuce a fourth time.
13th point of this game. 2-1 Capriati leads for set. Capriati that time putting the pressure on Sabatini by coming to the net. frustration and slamming the ball off the court. difficult conditions but the shot that Gabby just tried to play the backhand slice down the line is one of the most difficult shots in tennis you have to go for a lot of control and you can just see how bad the wind is tennis this morning at nine o'clock and it was perfect conditions clear blue sky no wind at all and then about 11 o'clock the wind picked up and it's just gained in strength ever since it keeps the sun bass crowd cool but it plays havoc with shots line that time. Sabatini not coming up. Well, Gabby has to wait for the right ball to come in behind because as, as Jennifer has shown us before, she can hit some unbelievable passing shots, especially off the backhand side. And Gabby taking her time, not playing to Jennifer's pace at all because Jennifer does play very quickly between points. from Jennifer on that last serve because she didn't put a hard serve in. A slow paced serve and that caught uh, Sabatini off guard. Sabatini was, it, was expecting it to come through a little bit faster and because it wasn't much of a hard serve the, the wind also held it back and that brought the miss hit from Gabby. Sabatini in three previous meetings will remind you has dropped but one set to Capriati. Second serve.
Sabatini has been broken once, you know that. And the different backhands of Sabatini and Capriati. A lot of topspin off that forehand side of Sabatini. a fabulous trip to Japan for Sabatini at the Pan Pacific in the month of February. And in. Unleashing a wicked backhand down the line. 15 all. Sabatini's been very successful with the backhand down the line, as has Jennifer Capriati. They both like that shot. At the Pan Pacific, Gabriella defeated Steffi Graf, Martina, Mary Jo Fernandez. Was fortunate just to be able to get her racket on the return by Jennifer. I'll have to give Jennifer a short serve. She's going to really step in on those returns. Sabatini had to commit one way and uh, Capriati does like to go cross court with those shots and that's why Sabatini went that way, gave Jennifer her least favorite shot to hit but she made it anyway. In two previous matches, Sabatini broken three times. She may be broken twice in five sets or five games here. As you said, Paul, Sabatini did have a great tournament in Japan after the Australian Open, winning that uh, title, defeating Martina in the final, but the match against Steffi Graf in the quarterfinals, 7-6 in the third, <laughs> and Steffi actually had a match point in that match and uh, could have gone either way, but a very good win for Sabatini over Martina in that final. Could we have Graf and Sabatini here tomorrow? Time will tell. Steffi, easily, over Natalie Tozier today, 6162. Deuce. Now Sabatini, like Jennifer Abel, to stare down. Two match points. Or two pardon me, points. two break points. A little pre Gee, premature, would I don't you think say? Gabby wants to be at match point just yet. You turned pale when you looked at me. Sabatini. Three straight points earned by Gabby after once down 1540. Sabatini holds serving. And 
will return after this word from Olive Garden. Well, 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 well. Jennifer serving. Pinpoint accuracy. And the gentleman on your screen, Gabby's father, Osvaldo, and sitting next to him, Gabby's brother, Osvaldo Jr. We might have to tip his cap to Jennifer for that shot. a good idea from Gabby but she has to commit herself to the forehand down the line and very well controlled shot from Jennifer and why 40 love of all the articles we have read on Capriate, and they are everywhere, my favorite is where she defines what she likes most. Bart Simpson, Puppies, Madonna, MC Hammer, and reading Sigmund Freud, all at the age of 14. She's reading Sigmund Freud's Interpretation of Dreams. and dreaming of returning to the finals tomorrow against Steffi Groff. in the point as long as she could. Well, that's just great tennis from Sabatini. A well-disguised love over Capriati. Sabatini just angling the volley away for a winner. And Jennifer didn't give up then either. She's just trying to chase that down. coming on quite strongly in the latter part of these games. Well, the last few games have been very close. Could have gone either way. Stefano Capriati. Yes, come along, Jennifer. Concentrate. Her concentration has waned twice. Sabatini, who lives in Buenos Aires, Argentina. She also has a home on Key Biscayne and spends a lot of time there because when she goes back to Argentina, she is so well known. She's like a goddess there. And she can't go anywhere in Argentina without being recognized.
very hard ground strokes exchanged by both players. But Capriati, a little bit of topspin on that forehand and the wind behind her, that just popped the ball over the net. behind Jennifer Capriati. In our last three games, we have been a deuce 12 separate times. Been very evenly played, but the decisive points have gone in favor of the 14-year-old youngster from Saddlebrook, Florida. Sabatini won a silver medal at the 1988 Olympics in Seoul in singles. from Capriati and uh, that point taking a lot out of both players but so 30 love Sabatini at the 1988 Olympics in Seoul. Sabatini. Sabatini receiving a delay of game warning. Uh, the first today there was some hint and our producer Tom Hastings picked up on this that she might be trying to delay play. Why in a moment? <laughs> Wendy? Well, Jennifer plays very quickly between points, and Gabby does like to play at her own pace. Gabby never, ever plays quickly. sort of after she won that point looked at the umpire and said here take that <laughs> she did mean to get an acute angle on it but I don't think she meant it as good as that but at the 1988 Olympics Gabby carried the flag for Argentina in the opening ceremonies and that was a great honor for her Steffi Graf won the gold <laughs> that year to go quietly as Jennifer in this game and up 4-2 it's 40-15. Well, Gabby just received a warning for a time violation. If she gets another time violation she'll receive a point penalty and if uh, it happens several times she could only receive point penalties. suffered from a wane in concentration her last two games after building 40-15 advantages or 15-40 as the case may be here the same may be said of Gabrielle 
That certainly did not help Los Finest. Decidedly Jennifer Capriati crowd today. Well, they're definitely behind the young 14-year-old and Jennifer having to cover a lot of court in that match and uh, Gabby trying to get the lob over Jennifer's head but Gabby didn't move her feet on that shot. Sabatini. Jennifer was looking into the sun. The wind was also taking the ball deeper. And the angle that she got off that lob was incredible. And Jennifer coming up with 11 winners to Gabby's six. Love. Well, Gabby trying to mix the play up, but Gabby way out of court when she hit the backhand volley. And Jennifer loves to go cross court with the forehand. survives what I thought was a rather poor line call a moment ago. 40-15. As again she stalks the net relentlessly. Well, smart play by Sabatini because when she hit that backhand approach shot, uh, she didn't give Jennifer very much pace. Jennifer likes a lot of pace to hit her oh. backhand passing shot. Open champion hoping finesse rather than a power backhand might work. It did not. Gabby's very good with the drop shot, but the thing is that she was way near the baseline when she hit that shot, and it would have had to have been perfect to have been a winner. And headed back to Miami next week. from Sabatini, also heavy top. appeared to be deep. It did appear to be in. long. Mm -hmm. And after that point, Jennifer just sort of pointed to the baseline. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't call out during the point. Thank you. And Tom Cook in the chair, admonishing. Caparati serves.
59. Sabatini hot footing Capriati all over this very warm court. Sabatini's approach affecting Jennifer there? Definitely. Sabatini rushed in behind that shot, just made Jennifer rush her attempt at a passing shot. And it's a very good tactic by Sabatini because it's a pressure situation at the moment. And Jennifer perhaps fatigued, having major difficulty with first service. the net, forcing her opponent into error. And once again, missing the first serve. Double break point. And break she does. once again getting the second serve from Capriati but hitting such heavy topspin but also hard with the return of serve a very aggressive game from Gabby the first time of course that Capriati has been broken today Turnabout fair play. The tape stops the backhand. 30 long. Gabriella Sabatini won the Virginia Swimmers Championship at Madison Square Garden in 1988 and last year lost in the final in five sets to Mr. Sellers. And it was one of the best women's tennis matches I have ever seen. I think the trophy that Monica was holding was about as big as she is, <laughs> the Virginia Slims presented. And uh, the Virginia Slims Championships in New York last year broke attendance records for a women's professional tennis tournament. down 40-15. Capriati just pounding the backhand side of Sabatini and Sabatini has to hang on that side once again. But Capriati just hitting to the open court. Thank you. 
30 love. Jennifer Capriati quickly. With two rapid points. She had won but two points in the last three games. Although she has battled point after point after point in prolonged volleys and rallies. It's gone the other way. went up 30 love in this game by getting her first serve in play but on this point she has to rely on a second serve and Sabatini pounces on the return 30 all. 30 all Gabby telling us after last night's win that she was satisfied with every aspect of her game it was now a matter of concentration and execution down three games to one and facing double break point Gabriella Sabatini has turned that adversity into perhaps this triumph in our opening set Tennis from Sabatini down 5-3 to win the next four games, breaking Jennifer twice. And when Jennifer served for it at 5-4, Gabriella Sabatini breaking her 15. And that first set taking an hour and six minutes. She had her service broken to Gabriella to open that set. She broke Caparati to end it. Oh. Love 15. Love 15. How do you do? Well, Jennifer says, if you're going to attack my second serve, I'm going to do the same to yours. Well, it comes in there at 61 miles per hour. It deserves to be hammered. and Sabatini and it's Capriati who actually has to cover a lot of court and a great lunging volley but good anticipation from Sabatini but the thing is that Sabatini is making Capriati move from side to side and up and back and Capriati's working so much harder than Sabatini Sabatini not letting up at all with the ground strokes. 
and pinpoint accuracy with that forehand down the line. And I think Jennifer Capriati is looking maybe a little tired. And uh, the mental part comes into that too because she knows she had a great opportunity to win that first set. Recall the delay of play warning given by Tom Cook in the chair to Sabatini. Was it her experience showing through and she was penalized for it? She knew it was warm. You had to have pace on this. It was going to be a long afternoon. Well, Gabby doesn't intentionally um, go over the 25 seconds that you're allowed between points. I think she just didn't realize how long she uh, had taken because it was after a very long and exhausting rally. She just did. Oh, and she mad. Well, against most players, that particular shot would have been a winner. But Capriati, very smart Oof. in throwing up the very high lob and just the, the error coming off Sabatini's racket. And now it's Capriati who's actually slowing up the play. With a break point. And Capriati opened this set as she did the first by breaking Gabriella Sabatini. Yes, she can. Indeed, she does. She leads one game to love. The opening would be tougher this year because they're used to her. Has found her going tough today. Again against Sabatini. Love 15. Well, that's very true because when Jennifer came on the tour last year, no one knew how to play her. And now that they've played her a couple of times, they've watched her play. They have a fair idea of what tactics they should use against her. Well, that's the first double fault of the match, and that's coming from Jennifer. And long, 1540. Jennifer has failed to hold service in each of the last two times that she's held that honor. Sabatini once again, seeing the opportunity to come into the net, not trying to do too much with that backhand volley, but waiting for the opportunity to go for the winner. And it's Capriati's service that has let her down in this match, most when she needs it. She has failed to get her first serve in play. Shot 15 love. 
since the ninth game of our opening set, Sabatini has taken a stranglehold on this match. Sabatini has making, has made, sorry, Capriati move from side to side and cover a lot of court, and she's wearing her opponent down. And Capriati having been broken three times in this match to Sabatini's twice. 30 left. 30 left. Sabatini winning the sixth in our last set. Turn to Boca in a moment. Fifteen love Capriati with service. on the court, causing a light. There's a can rolling along the court, so it's the right thing for Tom Cook, the umpire, to do. <laughs> Glimpses of greatness still to come. We haven't seen that shot for a few games. Jennifer was very successful with the backhand up the line in the first set. We certainly haven't seen the same Jennifer Capriati that at one point led five games to three in the opening set. Evidence again. Well, Gabby playing with a lot of confidence to be able to hit that shot. She came right in and uh, was had made up her mind very early that she was going to drop shot off the serve. Concentration, fatigue, and I don't want to use the word disintegration, but uh, Jennifer Capriati indeed dropping six of the last seven games is struggling at the moment. Coast on Prime Network and here in the state of Florida on Sunshine Network. Our apologies for interference we're receiving from the sun today that may be affecting your signal. It's our problem here in Boca Raton, certainly not the fault of your regional cable system, and we appreciate you bearing with us. First time we've been to Deuce in a long, long while.
break opportunity for Gabrielle. Can she win seven of eight games? Take a 3-1 lead? Yes, she can. The game to Gabriella Sabatini. She has now broken Jennifer Capriati four straight times. Absolutely incredible because Jennifer had that great opportunity when she served for the match at 5-4 and then to lose the next four games and that's got to be hurting her mentally. She knows she had a great opportunity and physically Sabatini's running her all over the place. Right on the line. Rather vociferous, <laughs> isn't she? Wrong. Into. from Sabatini. Favorite double-handed backhand return from Capriati. I saw where Chris and Andy said they hoped to have a little girl with a pigtail and a two-fisted backhand. First popularized by Chris Everett what you see today, don't you, in Jennifer Capriani? And long. 30 all. 30 all. How do you do if you're just joining us? Seven to five, Sabatina rallying in our opening set. And leading here, three games to one. There is Jimmy on the left. This is Paulette Everett on the right. About to become grandparents for I don't know how many times. <laughs> still making Capriati work for everything. And Jennifer not able to get to as many balls now. Capriati with an uphill challenge facing here. Jennifer has won the first two points of each of the last three games. 40 love, but she has taken but one game in our last nine. That was long. Here, a love to him. Well, finally, she 
signs of life. Capriati gathers herself for two now in set number two. We might mention that with this wind blowing in from the Atlantic, there are thunder clouds ominously gathering two in the distance and headed this way. Mother Nature with an array of challenges for us today in Boca. Oh. Yes, running her back and forth. That's where she's been so effective, Miss Sabatini. Very good control from Sabatini, and very, very smart tactics, plus the heavy topspin from Sabatini just always puts a lot of pressure on you, and you have to work so much harder because of that topspin. being taught at the moment on position and placement. And Jennifer has to be feeling a little weary after all this running. A service winner, she leads five games to two with Gabriella Sabatini. Can she break Capriati again? We will soon find out. Of 15. And 15 off. Sabatini. Beating Arachitova. Last night, straight sets. Has yet to drop a set in this tournament. of advancing to our championship final tomorrow. double match point. Capriati, the cross-court forehand. Wendy Turnbull at the moment, standing by down at court level.